so uh so we just got back from spokane and uh it was an awesome time of three nights of just uh seeing what god wanted to do we went out and we wanted to just stoke the fire of revival out there in spokane and god showed up in a major way it was awesome we have some testimonies that we want to roll for you guys so let's go ahead and play those so this trip was uh for me it was just um life-changing and it was it was um totally different i've never been on a trip like this before really it was something new something new for me and um it was just amazing to see all the um all the things that god did for the people of spokane well on the first night um we uh actually i think it was peter that had a, a word of knowledge that people with joint pain or bone bone uh, fractures or or something in that arena and uh, we had a group of people come up and uh, there was one gentleman that um, needed prayer so i was praying with him and he said he was in a car accident i think 20 25 years ago and he had constant back pain and that was like in the in the middle of his back and so just put my hand on his back and he started praying and uh it was a, a heat that just came off of my hand and and it was just a this it was like on fire and he could feel it and um we prayed for uh, several minutes and then when we were all done i asked him I'm like how, how do you feel and he goes it's gone he goes i felt that pain for 25 years and it's all gone and his comment was it felt like felt like melted butter and uh, i was just like praise god you know and so the next day we were able to talk with him and he's like man this is golden he just loves it so um unfortunately we called him the butter guy because that was a that was his comment and i'm like awesome so i got to pray for a guy with a knee issue that had been there for a really long time too and and uh, he just feels better but i gotta use it i'm like okay you go use it and you come back tomorrow and you tell me a lady that actually came up for prayer and uh, I, I prayed for her two children, and I asked her how I could pray for her, and she said, well, maybe just some encouragement. Uh, she said, my mother committed suicide last night, and I thought, oh my gosh. And I just hugged her, and I said, Lord, help. <laughs> and uh, the Lord said she'd done a really good job. So I just started to tell her, I really feel the Lord wants you to know that you did a really good job, that you honored your mother through all of this, no matter what, even when you were hurting, you didn't put it on her and that you looked after her till the day she went home. And uh, God says to you today, a well done, a good and faithful servant. And she just cried again and broke down. So just said a few more words of encouragement to her. I just felt like her children weren't gonna suffer any of the, um, uh, um, anything coming down the generational line. And she wasn't and that her grief, uh, was not going to be long, that she was going to have a time of mourning, but that grief would not hang on for her, and uh, that she had a full, full life ahead of her, and she didn't have to worry about any of the things in the family line. Well, the highlight for me for this conference um, was really the, the first night, and it was meeting Robbie and Chandra. And uh, God led me to, to pray for them, and when they walked away, you could tell they were touched, but it wasn't you know, kind of mm-mm. But on Thursday night, when we saw them, they looked lighter. And tonight, with this being a final night, they just look like sunshine, just radiating from their face, and just so much lighter. They looked and more positive and more faith, you know, in God, and that they made the right decision to come to the conference, and also that it um, propelled them to their the next step in their walk with the Lord. There was a, a guy who had back pain. There was, there was a call for back pain or, or uh, bones being out of whack. And this guy came up and as they were talking about praying for backs, I, I thought, well, I have back pain, you know? I, I, I should go receive and I just, I don't know, I felt like I need to focus on someone else getting their healing right now. And, um, and so I went up to this guy put my hand on his shoulder, said, can I pray for you? Felt this fire, and, and, and uh, Jeanette and I were both praying for him, and my hand was so hot on his hand, on his uh, shoulder, and I said, 
um, do you feel that? And he's like, yeah. And, and so I put my hand on his back and uh, just felt a tangible heat there. And so that was really neat. Um, and so I, he ended up, uh, we, we stopped praying and he ended up going back. And I thought he was going back to sit down, but he stayed up. And because uh, Darren had said, hey, does anybody want to testify? And he stayed up there and I was actually surprised because, you know, sometimes you just pray and you don't think about what happens and, and everything. Um, but he he basically said that uh, he's had pain in his back for years. And this was the first time that he had uh, felt something shift or change in after many, many times of prayer. On top of that, he had groin pain and uh, and that he was going to that area as well. The theme early on in the week uh, was, uh, across the board, was the heart, about the heart. And it wasn't a Valentine's heart. It was um, the heart with the heart valves. That's how everybody was describing their visions. And two weeks ago, my mom was diagnosed um, with uh, congenital heart failure, and she needs two valves um, that need to be repaired. And ironically, when I got the address, it was two miles away from mom and dad's, half hour from the church. So it just was meant to be that we were supposed to go by um, and pray for them. So the whole team went by and prayed for my mom and dad that um, are in their 90s. And it just uh, meant the world to mom. But most importantly, Afterwards, mom was saying that she could finally take a deep cleansing breath and she was so touched. Um, so it's just those, those appointments that you can't write off and that you have to obey. And God just dropped this right in our laps and we showed up and it was just, it was awesome. Hey, we went to the, uh, in Spokane, uh, so the Riverfront Park and um, partnered up with the lady from the from the Access Church, her and I went out and she had Bibles to give out. She's ready, She's she does this all the time. She says for hours and hours, she loves coming there. And so I partnered with her and we found a guy who um, was in the middle of a sex trans, tr where they changed their sex. And we prayed for him and he's angry. He was almost violent things that he was thinking and she pursued, she had, verses for him and she didn't let him go and we stayed with him for 20 minutes and um but he continued to want to change our bible to make it fit his narrative and she's like nope here is the verse you know we believe this and nope you don't love me you're not with you know if i'm going to do this christians don't love me and but then the tears kind of welled up like who he wanted to be loved and so we just spoke into how much jesus loves him and how much Jesus never leaves him and how the Holy Spirit's his partner and you know the battle isn't all his and he just felt it was all his all the time. So we continued to talk with him about how Jesus is there and so is Holy Spirit. And then Phil came in as he was seeing some things and you can finish. Yeah. So I, I was just watching them minister and they were ministering to him for quite a while and and listening to all of it and then finally I just kind of had this feeling just to step in and um, and he, I think the next day he had either a court appearance or he had some kind of an official thing that he needed to go do. And we just prayed that Jesus was going to be with him, that he was going to be uh, hand in hand with Jesus as he went through that process and um, just felt the presence of God and would help him make those correct decisions. And, um, and then he, he, he started crying and he could really feel that presence as we were praying. And so... It was kind of fun that at night at Access Church, we just decreed that Jesus was going to be with him the next day and, and uh, just just help him make the right decisions in this process. So it, it was it, it's almost like I want to go back and find out how it, how it goes today. So <laughs> Basically, I heard God speak to me after that. Um, I was hearing God the whole entire time, and he had me say to them that God has not forgotten this forgotten about Spokane, God loves Spokane, and God is going to pour out His Spirit upon Spokane. I've discovered that uh, 
uh, getting out and giving away what God gives us is uh, one way to stay, keep the water fresh in the reservoir. <laughs> Uh, I sense myself becoming a little stagnant. I hadn't gotten out and, and ministered anywhere for quite a while, so I really felt uh, refreshed and uh, honored to be able to come to Spokane and uh, share what God had put on my heart to share with people. You see, when we first came, people were very polite, very welcoming, um, but on ton tonight is the last night and people were just leaving with so much joy everyone was excited everyone had a smile on their face and i know um just based on the miracles signs and wonders that we saw this weekend that people were truly impacted by what god had for them here i just have to say the whole trip was just so exhilarating like you just wanted to go and, and not come back i could describe this few days in just one word it would be overwhelming Yeah, it was it was really an incredible time, and uh, and I'll tell you what you know, uh, God is releasing His church. He's releasing us out of the church building, and He's sending us out. You know, He really is launching us out. And uh, you know, we were we were out doing tent meetings, and we were uh, when we were first coming back, and I felt like the Lord was just saying, "There's a reason why you're outside the church and not inside the building yet." And it and it was it was like. He was saying, get it, get it. You know what I mean? Like you're outside the church. Do you see it? Okay, cool. Now you can come back in. And then, and then we came back in and, and, and we, uh, you know, we started to meet inside again. But I feel like the Lord's really sending something. And it was cool because on three days notice, Jeanette was able to kind of work with the team and build a team, reach out to her A team. And we were, I mean, big, let's give it up to Jeanette. I don't, you know, you are, uh, I really felt, you know, John and I were talking on the way back, John Shada, and he's like, you know, there's something about apostles that uh, the, the word apostle is someone who is sent, you know, in, in the Roman times, they would send an apostle um, to a conquered land and, and they would have them convert the area to make it look like Rome. And that's what apostles do is they, they're sent ones that go and they build an infrastructure to where there's uh, an even flow throughout the kingdom, you know, and that's, and Jeanette, that's really what you do is uh, in three days notice, you know, in this, in 2020, we've gotten a lot of three day notice times. It's like, all right, we're going, going live and Three days, here we go. Or, or we're going to be in a tent in three days. Or we're back in, in the building in three days. Or we're going to Spokane in three days. And then all of a sudden we have all of these revival teams going. And so um, Jeanette really was able to just build a wineskin. And, I mean, it, it just was really awesome. So, Jeanette, would you come up? I really feel like you have something that you, you can release um, even now. And I can ramble till you got it. But... Um, but basically, I, I just want to honor Jeanette because she came in and she's just like, come on, come on, come, come sit. You know, you, this is, she's like, hey, I, uh, she governed over it. And it was cool because our team flowed so well together. Everybody brought their peace. You know, there was like that picture right here. Everybody brings their peace. And when you bring your peace, then you can actually build something that's bigger than you. It's, a, it's, a, it's bigger than the sum of its parts. It's not a pile of parts. It's put together and it's a clear picture, if that makes sense. It's not just a pile of parts or a pile of puzzle pieces. So, um, you know, uh, God was doing a lot 
uh, in the children's ministry, in, um, in serving, in uh, highlighting specific people. He really worked a whole whole thing from day, uh, day one to day three. So, um, so yeah, I just want to honor you, Jeanette, for building on short notice and having a mind to say, okay, what is this? Because Jeanette's been talking about go teams for years. She's like, yeah, we got the A team, and then we got the go team, and I'm just laying out all your blueprints. But I mean, like, but now it's coming to pass. And, and that's the thing is when you get something from the Lord, you hold on to it, you preserve it, you honor it, and then you wait, and, and then you get the green light. And it's as if Jeanette's like, cool, well, we have a, a wine skin for this. So here you go. Hi. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I just love the way that God works through me, but I love the way he surprises me every single time I say yes to something. It's very seldom what I think I'm saying yes to, just as a warning. There's like, should be a warning sign. So you're saying yes, God's make, laying plans. So I'm learning how to be who I know I am and not ruling out that what I think I know it is exactly right. So um, every, pretty much I watched, I walked through the time we were there with Holy Spirit as best I knew how to see what was one needed in the meetings, what, what they needed there, and what the team needed to understand in the process of being there. So it might sound confusing, and to me it wasn't confusing. It was like walking through. I felt like I was in a cartoon sometimes. <laughs> you know. But um, it was so satisfying to me because it was used, the Lord used me, and no one knew but me. So, but he used me to, oh, well, evidently you could see it outside. I don't know. <laughs> but to, to do what I already really know how to do, but have never put all the dots together. Melissa and I shared several times, God was connecting the dots on so many things, dots that were made in our lives years and decades ago. 25 years, Tom, Tom and I have been following <laughs> what God wants us to do. And, and a lot of you have as well. Spent years trying um, to make sure that you don't miss what God has for you. That has always been our heart. God, use me, take everything I have, everything I am, and use me how you want. I, I traded it all. We traded it all in. And this is, I really think, the word for this house. You know, you, you trade it all in to have everything God has for you. It's really simple to walk that way and be correctable. It's really, it's really not hard. So I just want to encourage I just want to encourage you to be aware of and open for the, the new in your life. Because we can't go, we can't be, maybe you'll never leave the building, and that's okay. But when you're praying, like Sandy shared, I heard her share last service, you know, you're, uh, there's, you're there in spirit, whether you're physically there or not, and can participate. Um, I don't have words for what I'm trying to say right now, so just give me another two minutes and I'll be done. Um, <laughs> but there is something that God's built, God is building here, a machine that will be able to turn on a dime is what I keep hearing. You turn on, it's an old term, but you know, you're going some way and you might be going really fast, but there we go. Because God said to go that way. And that's what he's preparing this house for, to be able to quickly, the three days, what happened, and we know a lot of things that happened in three days, right? Right back to the very first day in three days. So it's, um, it's just time to be more aware of the kingdom that he is manifesting here and who he's raising up to lead and who he's raising up to um, equip, train and equip. But, and then the hearts of the people who are here, and all you have to say is, uh, I say yes. I'm going to go to that. I am scared out of my socks, but I'm going to go and do that and see what God does in me. I can honestly say most of what God did through me scared the heck out of me because I, I didn't feel like me, and, and yet it was him through me, new, in a new way. So um, that's what you get. That's what you benefit from. When you say yes, you step out of your comfort zone. We all know how to live in our comfort zone really well. But you, when you step out of it and you say yes and you go, then God is able to do through you and in you um, what he wants because you're a, a bit off your game. We're a bit off our game when we're out of the house, right? Um, I used to be more comfortable out of the house. 
now I'm more comfortable in the house. So now evidently I'm going to have to straddle both. I don't know. <laughs> but but yeah, the, it's exciting, right? So I just encourage you all as you go forward, whether you're a new member or whatever. Um, can I give a... So, um, you know, really, life happens here in teams, and we're learning that more and more, and everyone here is destined to be on a team, whether, and the awakening team, it might seem, it might seem like, oh, yeah, I could do that, but, you know, I don't want to do that, I've done that before, and it was like, but, you know, when we serve, we all, the awakening team is, is a group of people who are willing to say yes to loving people who are coming through the door and into our sanctuary here, whether they've been doing that for 20 years or whether it's their first time. Yeah. And so when you say yes to doing that, God gives you opportunity to minister, to know people, and all of that. And you know what? It's much easier to do it outside of here if you've already done it here. It's almost necessary yeah. Yeah. to serve where you live and then take what you've learned and who you are out. So, um, so I just encourage you as I'm going to be doing some um, personal conversations with people coming up and then the AS101 team next time you know, that graduates um, because we really feel there's, there's something on the structure. Um, it's nothing special that any person did. It's just something that's on the structure that's being built. So I'm encouraging you all to be part of the structure someplace. Know where you fit and, uh, and come in. Uh, yeah, say yes when I ask you something. <laughs> So um, earlier this morning and then during the second service, I kept seeing all these eyes in the spirit. They're just lots of eyes everywhere, everywhere. And then I started seeing like dots, like you just said, dots. So they were being connected with lines and dots. Yep. So I feel like you and I could agree yep. in praying for, um, you know, for that, for eyesight, yep. whether it's in... I don't know that we really understand the power and the need for administrative anointing. Because if you don't have it, you, you're a disaster. And so there's a real anointing. There's a real strength. There's a, Jeanette brings a, a sure foundation in that area of administration. Um, it's a very, very powerful, very powerful anointing. And we need people that can hear from God. We need... To, um, oh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And so, yeah, and with Patty too, you know, so we've got a couple of gifts here that, um, I just, I just want to honor you both and recognize you both. And in, uh, what seems like office work is actually heaven's work bringing forth. Um, I said to Patty on the way down the stairs when, um, don't do that to me. <laughs> when she was, uh, let's see, when you became an elder, I said that uh, I just felt like the Lord said, <laughs> that the Lord said she was um, the SRC strategist. And so we just kept that between ourselves, but you can see that. So it's really, you know, we just honor, we just honor you where you stand and what you do and um, we just pray that God pour out more and more over you. And, uh, but we're going to agree, the three of us, we're going to agree this morning uh, on, on the area of eyes, eyes to see. Now, I just kept hearing, you know, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout all the earth, looking for those he may show himself strong on their behalf. And then the Lord watches over his word to perform it. So as, you know, as his word, we are his word. We are the word made flesh here on the earth. And he watches over that which is ordained personally and then corporately. And it's, it's a, yeah, it's a corporate anointing that's, <laughs> that's growing. And, and so, Father, we, we come into agreement. Um, just lift your hand, you, you, put, stretch yeah. your hands out towards these people. <laughs> God, help us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But... Lord, we just, we just receive and release, uh, Father, uh, eyes to see in that administrative place. Uh, in your workplace, in your church place, in your home place, uh, Father, that you would increase the understanding of that place of called administration in the spirit. 
So we just bless, Father, that we just say, say eyes be opened. Uh, eyes be opened if, uh, if you're placed in the church, if you're placed in, uh, in, your, in business ministry, wherever you're placed, let your eyes, we say, let your eyes be opened. Uh, let any foggy thing now we declare over us as the people be removed now in Jesus' name. We declare clarity of sight. Clarity of sight. Uh, Father, in administration, in, in prophetic ministry, in healing ministry, in deliverance ministry, in the food ministry, Father, that everything that is flowing out of your heart, God, I just declare eyes to see, eyes to see. I declare the blessing of the Lord. We thank you, Father, that your eyes have stopped here amongst these people, that you could sh you would show yourself strong on our behalf. And so we bless you. We receive we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <laughs> yeah, well, uh, bless the Lord. I just uh, feel a word just for the new people uh, that joined us today. Um, I've just been watching you as you've been coming to church and stuff, and I really feel like God wants you to know that you have a place. Uh, that you have a destiny here in this house, uh, that you're going to be loved so unconditionally in this house. And guess what else? You're going to make mistakes in this house, but that's okay. We've made so many. Uh, we, don't, we don't have any condemnation. We just move right on through it. Um, I just want to say Jeanette just did an excellent job on this trip, uh, uh, really uh, putting uh, others before her. Uh, she drugged Melissa on with her, and Melissa just did outstanding. She's just mentoring someone after her, and that's kind of what we're about here. Um, but I just, uh, I just really feel like I have a word for you right here, is that um, God has such a work for you, it's just going to scare you a little bit. And you're a doctor, and you've done some scary things. <laughs> uh, but uh, just both of you stand up here. But I just feel like God's going to just open some doors for you, and you're just going to go into a whole new line. Uh, God has just made, has, he's just turned your whole career in another direction. And you might think, man, we're going to retire here. We're going to have fun. We're going we're gonna to rest. You are going to operate out of a place of rest. That's true. Uh, but God is turning you into a whole new direction. And uh, what he has for you is just really, really, uh, all of your previous experiences are just piled up here. And you've come to this day and you are ready for this day. So, so as God takes you into the new thing, uh, uh, you're going to have just such agreement with one another. And you're going to have such fun. It's not going to be like work. It's not going to be like you're home and he's at work. It's going to be like you guys walking together in a beautiful work uh, that God is doing. And you're just going to have so much fun. I just prophesy yeah. fun over you the rest of the days of your life. You're going to be touching people's lives. You're going to be seeing change. You're going to just see people that are going in a whole new direction, just like you are. They're going to come in hurting and broke. And when you get through with them, see, you used to fix them in the physical. Now you're going to fix them in the spiritual. Both of you. You're going to be fixing people in the spiritual. It's going to be a brand new thing. And God has prepared you for this day. You're totally qualified. You don't need any more training. You've been trained in the love of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, be encouraged today, uh, everyone. Um, yeah, just be so encouraged that God is doing such a big thing here, such a big revival that I can't put. And you can have what you dream for. I dream bigger and bigger and bigger by accident. You know, because he shows me things. I see things in the spirit. And I go, I'm a, I want that. I'm going to stand in the middle of the biggest revival in history. Are you? Are you? Yes. Amen. Amen. So good, Gil. Aren't these guys awesome? Aren't these guys amazing? How many of you just sense a, a shift? How many of you don't? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. As Patty was talking about activation school here, um, there is a new wineskin of activation and immersion that the Lord is releasing um, to Seattle Revival Center. Um, I, uh, I am not convinced that 100 more years of sermons is going to bring heaven to earth.
I am not convinced that 100 more years of sermons is going to bring heaven to earth. This was one of the most uh, fruitful ministry trips that I have ever done, and I hardly did anything. These guys, uh, John Shada, who was, he, he was the guy that was giving his testimony in the rain. I don't know if you remember that one on the video, which was just cracking me up. He's like uh, standing out in the rain giving his testimony. Um, I don't know why he was doing that, but um, he prayed for a, a couple and, and the husband hadn't experienced the father heart of God. And so John just gave him a hug and the father heart of God just came and imparted from John's heart into the, into the, into the, into the man's heart. And, and his wife was standing there with a crippling pain because of the curvature of her neck. So her, her neck would, would, would go out like this. And then with all of the pressure of her work and financial stress and all kinds of stuff, she just told John, I'm, I'm in a, I'm in bad shape. I, I'm in a lot of pain. And so um, John, who that day received a prophetic word from a couple that he didn't know, they gave him a prophetic word that there was a Smith Wigglesworth anointing on him. And they didn't know this, but both John and Smith Wigglesworth were plumbers. And that Smith Wigglesworth didn't step into his healing anointing until later on in life. And John received this prophetic word about a, a Smith Wigglesworth healing anointing. And then he's there praying for this lady. She got I, I, extreme serious pain in my neck. And he prayed and all of a sudden she got, she just, the presence of the Lord just came on her and she just got down on, on the ground. And then she came back up and said, all the pain's gone. The words of knowledge that were released in in the meeting um, were from were from Andrea and I's offspring, <laughs> from our from our children. Like our kids were just giving these incredible. I'll say this: like the most incredible miracles that I've seen in my ministry have been through my children. Uh, Abigail had uh, a word of knowledge one time about uh, like a green brain or something like that with like lines going through it. And so I released that word in a meeting about this brain and said, "Is anybody here with like brain damage or something?" And this lady came up and so we just prayed for her and the power of God hit her and she hit the ground. I received an email from her pastor, a whole page of symptoms. Um, she couldn't taste, her blood pressure was through the roof. She was on, on, on all these meds for all, like all kinds of things that we just take for granted. Everything from like, she couldn't feel, she get, like all of her senses and nerves were all just completely, because your brain is kind of like your your CPU is it's kind of like your processor for how you process everything and the pastor said she was completely healed and our, our, our kids came into something on this on this trip like 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 literally like they were just non-stop with Andrew I got a word I've, I've got something I've got something to share and and um, so literally, I've never seen this many significant miracles. I, as you heard, the butter guy, 25 years of constant back pain, completely healed after Phil's hand just got wicked hot. And he said his spine turned to butter, immediately, you know, totally healed. The guy that Anthony was praying for described what, he's, what he said, what it felt like a, a surge of power that hit his groin. And then all the back, the back pain, he began feeling his back popping and he began to stand up straighter with each pop. To being out in the park and Phil and Jane ministering to a guy who they didn't mention this in the video but said that he was so mad because of the injustice against transgender people that he wanted to take his AK-47 down to the courthouse and begin mowing people down uh, in order to get his own justice and Phil finally said enough is enough he began praying for the man and the Holy Spirit came upon him and the man broke down weeping underneath the presence of the Lord Um, this this uh, 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 this last week, a good friend in New Zealand uh, sent me a prophetic word uh, to my messenger. He said, um, "Darren, I saw you like in the spirit, and you were wearing 
a suit, but it was split down the middle, and half of your suit was like royal blue, like a, like a real nice deep blue, and then the other half of your suit was the British flag. And he said the blue suit, I believe, was, uh, there was something presidential uh, that, was, that was coming upon you. And then the, the British flag was something to do with um, influence in, in the Britain Isles and in, in, you know, in, 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 in Britain. I met with a young man uh, here at the church who doesn't go to church here, goes to an amazing church in the region. And he met with his pastor and said, hey, I've got this word that I would like to give to Pastor Darren. What do you think? And his pastor said, yeah, go ahead. So he drove here. We met on a Friday night, not this last Friday, but the Friday before that. And he said, uh, Darren, I, like, he said, I've been watching you. I've been watching Seattle Revival Center. He said, the Lord is doing something with you that's going to impact uh, cities and nations. And it's time for you to get your preaching team ready here at Seattle Revival Center because you're going to be gone a lot and you're going to need to have uh, uh, your teams uh, raised up and, 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 and ready to go. Uh, and neither of these two guys had any had any idea uh, about a prophetic word that Patricia gave to me that I never told you guys about. Um, I've been keeping something from you uh, at her church. And Rebecca and Anthony, you were there. And, um, and she said, "Darren, stand up." And she began to prophesy a network, which I had no desire uh, to even hear that th those words. Um, I was like, "Great! Like, how do how do you even how do you do that?" I don't want to do a network, right? It was like, I still remember when I was called to be a pastor. I was like, ah, wrong, no thanks. <laughs> I'll do something else, right? It was similar to that. Um, and then uh, just two weeks ago, Pastor Greg announced that I'd be stepping in as vice president of the International Fellowship of Ministries. Um, and we've got uh, kind of a year-long kind of transition plan. And we're going to see literally Seattle Revival Center go from being a local church to being a, an apostolic hub that is... Um, uh, intentionally networking with um, pastors, ministries, and churches that are already established all across the world, in Africa, all throughout Europe, all through the United States. And this, these aren't. This isn't stuff that's going to happen. This is stuff that's that's already happened and is and is and is happening. And um, and this is this is what I know um, that the Lord is going to use Seattle Revival Center to equip and activate the saints for works of ministry because the Pacific Northwest will not be changed through good sermons from Pastor Darren. It's true. It's gonna, I saw more fruitfulness in this last trip because I chose to not do the ministry. I chose to trust that there's a thing called the body of Christ and that there's the kind of glory and the kind of demonstration of power that can only be seen through his body. It says um, in Ephesians 4, for it is written, he has appointed some with grace, everyone say grace, to be apostles, and some with the grace, declare grace, to be prophets, and some with the grace to be evangelists, and some with the grace to be pastors, and some with the grace to be teachers. And their calling is to nurture and prepare all. Everyone say all. Hey, you're all. Look at the person next to you and say, hey, you're part of the all. I'm part of the all. To do what? All the holy believers to do their own works of ministry. And as they do, they will enlarge and build up the body of Christ. Just, just to clarify yourself right now, I am being prepared as I am a holy believer to do awesome works of ministry. Look at the person next to you and say, you've been called to do works of ministry. That Seattle Revival Center has been called to nurture and prepare all holy believers to do their own works of amazing ministry. And as they do this, they will enlarge and build up the body of Christ.
So that means that it is my role, I believe, here at Seattle Revival Center, not to create an epic worldwide stage where I can do works of ministry, but that it is my role to do whatever it takes to establish platforms where you can be equipped and activated and empowered to do what God has called you to do. It is the role of Seattle Revival Center, not to say, look what we can do, but it is our role to position you and to do everything necessary, just short of sinning, to convince you that Christ Jesus, the hope of glory, is residing inside of you. And I believe that the year of the Co, the year of the Rona, has been one of the most significant and important years for us as a church because we are shifting from an old Babylonian paradigm to a new order, a new way of doing ministry. And guess what? It's not necessarily all that new because it's in your Bible. It's in the book of Acts where the believers were dispersed and everywhere they went, they made Jesus famous. It's time to get ready because you're going to enter into the days of the awkward and the awesome. It is time to stop saying, I could never do that. You don't know who I am. Well, I tell you, you don't know who you are. So it's time to arise and shine and see who is seated inside of you. Yeah, we, um, as we were in Spokane, you know, word in the testimonies, we're, we're going out. It, my mind was blown with Jesus doing I started getting text, text messages from various pastors and and one pastor, I was telling Andrea last night, one of the pastors was like, can you send a team? And I wanted to say yes, but the problem is he requested a team to come the weekend before our next team goes. And if, and if, and if I personally said yes to both teams, then I would be gone for two weeks. And like, so like, how, so how do we do? So we're getting invitations um, to send teams. And so that is a part of the, the shift is that we're going to go from come, you know, coming here, like, 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 I'm just trying to find, you know, how many of you know it's not about finding a place with awesome worship, and it's not about finding a place with awesome preaching and teaching, and it's not about finding a place where you can get fed, that's, that's called the Bible and the internet, you can get fed in those places, it's about finding a community where you share the same values, it's about finding a community where you say, I will be known, I will be seen, I will engage, and I will be changed. That I'm not trying to find a place where I can get my nails done. I'm not trying to find a place with good coffee and, and good worship. I'm trying to find a place where I can get equipped just enough to be dangerous. And so, listen, s stay home, stay safe, unless you're a Christian. And if you're a Christian, it's time to go and live dangerously because God has never called you to live safe. God has never called you to, to just to play it safe and just to, that, that it is time to go. It is time to live dangerously. It's time to take a risk. It's time to fail. I can tell you this confidently. I have failed more than anyone here in this room. I can tell you this. I have prayed for more people that have died than anyone here in this room people that I prayed to be healed and they died. So who would like to receive prayer for me this morning? <laughs> but I can also tell you that I've probably prayed for more people that have experienced miracles than maybe anyone here in this room. Not boasting of myself, but boasting in Christ Jesus. And that if I fail, my response will be praise the Lord. And if I succeed, my response will be praise the Lord. I told our team if the very first time I said, if tonight is the worst meeting ever, and if nothing happens, we're going to come back and we're going to party. Why? Because if nothing happens, that wasn't on us. That was on him. We're just going to show up and we're going to be obedient. But if we show up and signs and wonders and miracles break out and people get set free, we're not going to take any of the credit and any of the glory, but we're still going to come back and we're going to party because he's worthy to be praised. We are a body. We are a body. We are a body. And I am so stinking proud of these guys. It was such an honor to do ministry with uh, Pastor Gail and John Shada. Th these people that have been uh, serving here at SRC longer than I've been alive. I told the church there in Spokane, I said, um, 
the people that are here on this team, they are servants in our church. Like the people that got to minister with us, they're the ones that took your temperature on the way into the building. And I said this, that's because I'm not impressed by prophetic accuracy. Any true Jezebel has that. I'm impressed by people with roots. Bob Jones would say this, no roots, no fruits. I'm not impressed by talent, by gifting. I'm impressed by character. I'm impressed by people that have made a commitment that I'm in the house of the Lord and I'll do whatever it takes just to serve the Lord. And I am so blessed to see the people here at SRC. I, so many of you uh, uh, before this service said, hey, I'm coming on the next one. I said, I know you are. Even at, the, even at the nine o'clock, people say, I'm ready, I'm ready to go. I say, okay, let's go, let's do it. Yep. I mean, you know that every time in the Bible, that there was an encounter with the Lord, it always leads to one word, go. How many of you know that in Isaiah, that, that the, the seraphim comes and brings the coal and touches his lips and he says, I'm looking for a spokesperson. I'm looking for an oracle who will represent me to a generation. And Isaiah says, here I am, send me. And then God says, now go. How many of you know that Jesus, he said, yep, you got three years with me and now I got to go. And now you got to go. Seattle Revival Center, we're about to go some places. How many of you know, how many of you know in 2020, we've been some places. Listen, if you need discipleship, uh, let's do it. Set it up. Get five or six people. I don't want to just spend hours with one person. Jesus didn't do that. Get a group of people. Let's get you disciple. You want to grow in the prophetic? Uh, you recruit, you know, five to ten people. Sandy will, will be happy to men mentor you. Let's, let, 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 let's do it. I want to grow in something. I, like, awesome. We got the best leaders in the world here at SRC. We'll be happy. We'll, we will invest countless hours. In, we, 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 will, we will do it. We're, we're about to shift from an activation school that's run by our elders to activation schools that are being led by our people as they are activating their friends and family into, into, the, into the kingdom. We're going to go from seeing, you know, 20 members in, in, a, in, a, in a Sunday uh, to seeing 100 members, you know, in, in, a, in a quarter, not because of our system, but because the people of God are getting activated and doing the things um, that Jesus, that Jesus did. I'm telling you, a hundred is an understatement. I'm telling you, many of you are going to be pastoring churches. You're going to be leading things. And I'm not talking about church buildings. I'm talking about in your living room. And then you'll have to move to somewhere else. And you'll have to find richer friends with bigger homes because God can't do what he wants to do in your home. Some of you are going to need to get a little richer so you can get a better home because of the stuff that God wants to do that can only happen. How many know there's stuff that God wants to do that can only happen in a home? Listen, I'll tell you how we're going to change the world. It's not going to be through our next conference. I'll tell you how we're going to change the world. We're going to get back to the book of Acts where they met in their homes and they broke bread together and they confessed sin one to another and then they would gather at temple to, to learn and to dive into the scriptures and then they would get persecuted and murdered and they would run for their lives and everywhere they went they said, this is who Jesus is. This is what he's done for me. He can do it for you. And it's just that from home to home, meeting and gathering at temple, it was the body of Christ. And no matter how much Nero tried to persecute the church, the more the enemy threw at them, the more they prospered, the more they multiplied. It's what I know. I don't know what the enemy has thrown at you, but he picked, with, he picked on the wrong person. I don't know what the enemy has thrown at your family, but he's picked on the wrong family, Zoma. I don't know what you been through, but this is what I know. You are not disqualified, so stop saying you can't do works of ministry because of your divorce. The devil is a liar. And I don't know what excuse you used in 2019 for not doing the works of ministry, but excuses don't work any longer. You say, but I'm old. Yeah, but baby, you still alive. You say, but I'm too young. Yeah, but then there's the archetype of David. It is time to arise and shine. And I have said, and I believe that this is true, that we're going to do everything just short of sinning to make Jesus famous in 2020 because it, this glory won't go to coronavirus and this glory won't go to President Trump. Jesus will be glorified through Seattle Revival Center in 2020 that we will do everything just short of sinning to see Jesus made famous. So now is the time to arise and to shake. Listen. God's doing, you know, what's happening? Why is he, why is he shouting? Why is he? Because I realize 
that my idolatry, that my, that my worship of some sort of religious churchy system will cost possibly Seattle of the kind of revival that only this tribe can bring. I believe that we have so many different tribes. I'm not saying that we're the only tribe, but listen, we are a stinking tribe. Uh, multi This thing goes back to the 60s. And not just so that we can host cute conferences. Not just so that we can host good, cute church meetings. That we are shifting from a cruise ship to a battleship. And we are looking for people that are willing to enlist in the Lord's army who aren't afraid to disappear so that Jesus can appear. If that is your desire, you're okay to disappear as long as Jesus can appear. Then go ahead and jump up to your feet. Because we believe, and I say we, because that pastors and and elders here at SRC are in so much stinking unity. (laughs) That we believe that a commanded blessing is inevitable. All right, just go and close your eyes and just ascend in the, into the spirit. Just, 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 just leave here for a second and fly up into him right now. And Lord Jesus, we give you our idols. We give you our systems. We give you our, 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 our models. We give to you the, even the heroes that have shaped the way that we think ministry should be, the way that church should be. And we say this morning as a church, we claim to know nothing but Christ Jesus and Him crucified. Lord, we give you permission to wrap us in a cloak of foolishness. Lord, we give you permission, Lord, to do whatever it takes, Lord, to transform the atmosphere over this great region. Lord, to transform, Lord, uh, cities and nations through us as a people. Lord, we give you, Lord, our paradigms and blueprints for what we think revival looks like. And Lord, we say, Lord, we don't want revival. We just want you. We just want your presence your uncensored face, your uncensored voice. Lord, we give you full permission to do whatever you want to do, to do it your way. And we say, Lord, we lay down our preferences for what worship should look like or sound like, for what for what a pastor should look like or sound like. Lord, we give you our religious spirits. We give you our traditions that have rendered your power useless. And Lord, we say yes to your face, to your voice, to your promise, to your will that none would perish, but that all would have everlasting life. And it is written, they fished all night, but they caught nothing. And then Jesus said, cast your nets on the other side. And they said, but master, you don't understand. We've been toiling. We've been working. We've already, we've already been fishing. And Jesus said, cast your nets on the other side. And when they cast their net on the other side, the Lord himself began to fill their nets supernaturally with so much fish, it was about to sink their boats. And you say, I've been working, I've been toiling, I've been doing so much with very little fruit, with very little evidence. And the Lord says, you've tried it your way, now let's try it my way and watch watch as I fill the nets. Lord, we thank you, God. We thank you, Lord, that you are the one that will fill your nets when we surrender our ways of doing things and do it your way. Lord, it is our desire at SRC to do it your way. And all God's people said, well, Rebecca, it's been a good good service. You want to wrap this thing up and do some ministry and whatever else? All right. Is that not amazing what the Lord is doing right now? Can we just shout and give praise to the Lord? Yeah, Jesus, you are so good. So good. Sorry, we're just going to take Zulma. Would you and your husband come up here? Is your husband? Yeah, I, I've just been watching this for like an hour. So, Rebecca, you, want, you can stay here. Now. Isn't it good when we can... I know it's late, but it's when we can join in and join our hearts with somebody that God's speaking to and, and 
So I just, uh, I wasn't quite sure what, what you, I was going to say to you guys. Um, I know I have spoken to you before a, about a healing anointing. And so I just, I feel like we just want to reiterate that um, into your life. In I just saw it in your hands when you were in the school of the spirit, saw it over you, you know, that, but I feel together, the two of you, uh, there is like a step up for the two of you. Uh, now I've seen uh, some things on Facebook. Are you, uh, are you, are you in ministry? You have a, a some sort of, or you just get on Facebook on Friday nights or? Okay, so unfortunately it's in Spanish, so I can't understand anything you're saying, but that's like, oh, I know them. <laughs> so, uh, but I just feel like there's a, there's a coming together. Why don't you just take each other's hand? There's something together that the Lord is doing uh, within the two of you. And it, it is what, you know, our whole life is ministry. That's, that's for sure. But there, I would call this, there's something in that, what we would consider church ministry and so um, and yet I, I know it's going to flow into your business um, there are some changes the Lord is requiring just in the thinking realm so uh, as you even like look together at the Bible coming into understanding something that uh, where the Lord wants to bring you into really touch and agree uh, on something as you um, you know, I'm not going to pretend I know exactly what it is, but I just feel there's something that the two of you together, and it's, it is. Uh, I'm going to call it ministry. It's going. I'm going to call it ministry, and I don't know if it will take you. I see maybe it will take you together out of here and then bring you back, and you know, like you're moving, but you have to go out and minister and back, probably to the uh, Spanish community. So, I just. I'm sorry, I forgot your first name, Horatio. Horatio, yeah. <laughs> So, Father, I just thank you for these two. Uh, I thank you, Father, for, and we just declare the wind of the Spirit over their lives today, God. We declare the change, God. We declare the change that, and we agree with the yes. We agree with the yes that have, has come out of their hearts today, Lord. The longing of this man, Lord. The longing, the deepest desire of this man, Father. In the name of Jesus, to uh, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And so I thank you, Lord, that as you release, um, as you step up, as they step up, God, as they step up, we bless, as you bring them up, that there's a higher place, eyes to see, wings to get there, Father, a heart that hears, Lord, a joining together, oil, fire, oil, and glory, Lord, fire, oil, and glory, that there'll be such a wonderful uh, ability to release the past. We honor the past, but Lord, as they step into the new, uh, Father, we just declare that the tutors and the teachers of God, we just declare, Father, the, the, um, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of, of understanding, the spirit of the knowledge of God. We thank you for the spirit of the fear of the Lord, Father, uh, upon their lives, that, God, all the things that they have agreed to in the beginning, Lord, we say yes. We say, be it unto them, Lord, what is written in their book. God, be it unto them what they agreed to in that sod of heaven, God, that council place of heaven. Be it unto them, Lord, in fullness, in richness, in uh, honor, in glory, in power. And thank you, Father. We just thank you for the two of them, Lord. We thank you. We thank you, Father, for where they've stood before you, God. We thank you how they've honored you in all their blessing. I see that in everything that God has blessed you with, I, I can see that you've honored him. You've said glory to God, glory to God. And then it was just added unto you. And then you said glory to God, glory to God. So that place, that realm of thanksgiving, uh, the Lord showed me one time, it's a realm, that realm of thanksgiving leads to the next place, which is called exceedingly abundantly beyond all that you could ask or think. So thank you, Lord. Thank you for them. Thank you for what you're doing in them, Lord. Thank you that old things have passed away and, and all things have become new for them, Father. <clears throat> in Jesus' name, amen. 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 I want to say you are a legitimate man. You're legitimate. Your life is legitimate. You know, no matter what you've been said in the past, no matter how low you think, you know, you might, I'm not qualified. I'm not qualified. I'm going to tell you, God <clears throat> doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called. And you are called. So I just want to declare that to your heart. You're legitimate. You're called. You're qualified by the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 
Well, thanks, because I didn't know what to do, and now I do know what to do. So I think that this needs a response. So anyone who feels like, as was mentioned, you know, you may not go anywhere, but for those I'm speaking to who do feel, Lord, send me, I want you to all come to the front. And I want this to be a time, COVID has been a year of exposing, of everything that needs to be known and exposed and let go of, that this is the time with the Lord, I wanna invite you to just say, Lord, send me. And that anything that may be just with timing or stuff in our life, whatever it is, that this would be the time that you know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that there is a shift, that the Lord from this day, that you would know that he has called you, that he is sending you. And so I just, uh, if the ministry team wants to come up, you don't have to, we can just watch and see if the Lord's leading. You, but I'm just gonna pray over you and the rest of the church. You can be blessed, you can stay, you can be here. Thank you so much for being here. We're so honored that you are part of SRC and just trusting us in leadership and what the Lord's doing. But for those of you who have come forward, I just, I just want you to, however you feel, to posture yourself before the Lord, to just communicate and talk to him, say, Lord, I send me and just whatever he's saying to you, any response, anything giving up to him, anything agreeing to, anything to break agreements with, that you would just allow the spirit to lead you to know that this day that you are marked in, in, in a way that maybe you've been marked before, but that this day that you would know that you have a body and a church around you in leadership that is in agreement with this decision coming forth and saying, Lord, send me. So I bless you, each and every one of you, Lord. I thank you for the willingness. Lord, I, th I thank you for the army, that this is an army, that this is your army. God, whom you have chosen, who you've called, who you've equipped. And God, I just pray that whatever they need, whatever they desire, Lord, that they would know, Jesus, that they have it in you, that they would trust that there is nothing that is holding them back, that there is no time that, um, that is to wait any longer, Lord, that they would just trust. This is the time to go. And so, Lord, open every door. We pray that they would break down every door. Lord, that opportunities would come, the funds would come, Jesus, that they would just see your hand, that this is a partnering and agreement with you. This is your invitation. And in return, they're saying, yes, send me. So I just bless each and every one of you. Thank you for saying yes to the Lord. Be blessed. Jesus.